Hello everyone, Wynjel here, and welcome back to the Betonia campaign for Mortal Empires. At the moment, we're still dealing with the undead situation down to the south, although we scored a major victory against the Barrow Legion after we defeated Heinrich Kembler in battle in the last episode. But now we've got a new enemy to deal with in the form of the cursed Norsken chief, Warfric the Wanderer. Him and his warband have sailed down from the Sea of Chaos to the north here, heading down towards the seams Langil. And I don't particularly want him to attack because he has a full stack under his command. And Langil has got a garrison and walls thanks to being upgraded to a tier 3 settlement. But the garrison as you can see is not that impressive, it's mainly consistent of peasantry and I don't feel comfortable about them holding off against a full Norsken warband. So to persuade them not to come and attack Langil, we're just going to move Leon Kerr's main force down towards Langil in order to garrison the settlement. This will hopefully persuade him to either head back up north or maybe to try and come towards Caron. And if he does that, we should hopefully be able to block him using Florence and be able to chase after him and defeat him in battle. Now, speaking of Loyon Kerr, we're going to upgrade him now with a few points we can spend on his skills. Now, what to actually go for? Decisions, decisions. Ladies' Mans will give me a 10% resistance, missile resistance, but that's not been a, such a big deal right now because we haven't faced en much enemies with missile damage, like the Undead or even Norska. For the most part, if you check, we've checked out Wolfric's uh, army composition, it's just mainly Marauders, so we don't have to worry too much about missile damage from them. Vigor loss reduction could be quite useful, making it so that my troops don't get as tired as quickly. That can come in handy. This one increases his aura and leadership. We've already upgraded our peasants up to full strength, as much as we can do anyway. We could go for this one, increasing our ammunition and reload time so we can do more damage with our bowmen. I'm tempted though to try and continue making him a bit of a hard hitter. So what I'm going to do is, let me see. We could upgrade that to 120, that would be nice. Let's make him even harder to hit. So we can really tank the damage a bit. And then what we're going to do next is I'm going to go for basic training. I am tempted to get the Royal Pegasus, but the problem I got right now is in order to make him a little bit tankier, taking that actually reduces his melee attack and defense by a huge amount, nearly by a third. And I'm not a particularly big fan of that until we can sort out upgrading him. Maybe once we give him something like the Sword of Quran here, maybe we can look into it. I'm not too sure yet. We'll wait and see. But anyway, that's him upgraded, and we've got one more turn into our armies are pretty much replenished back up to full strength. Maybe two turns in the case of these knights. So we're just going to leave them in the settlement here for the moment. But, as we have said about Langil being upgraded to tier 3 now, we can actually get started on upgrading our f f infrastructure. We can go for a windmill now, which increases the income from our farm by 25%, just in the region here where Langil is. But it also gives me some other stuff. It gives me extra growth in the, the province as well as to all adjacent provinces. So when you think about it with Petonia, once you get a few provinces under your belt and you start putting these in every province, it provides a massive sort of global boost to all your nearby provinces. And it also increases the recruitment capacity, which is going to be quite handy as um, Koran here is going to be one of our major recruitment zones. So for now we're going to make sure that happens and it's going to take two turns and then eventually we'll be able to upgrade to get ourselves bowmen with fire arrows and pox arrows. That would be quite a nice improvement. In the meantime as well we've got a building slot. We can't go for any of the landmark buildings yet. But we can actually get started now on a smithy. We're also one turn away from actually getting a grail shrine so we can get access to the damsels. As well as a few other things perhaps like battle pilgrims and the like. But going for a smithy will allow me to get those spear at arms and men at arms with shields and even improve my equipment capacity so we could put together armies extremely quickly. So that's most of my income gone and there's really not much we can do this turn. Our main force is there. Oh yeah, I forgot. We got Jason here now, my paladin. He's now back after being defeated and, uh, and wounded in an assassination attempt. Paladin of so what can we do with you? Um, I feel tempted to actually check out what's, excuse me, let's close these down. I feel tempted to actually check out what's going on at Blackstone Posts. But I presume they're building up an army at this point, so we're either going to encounter them at some point, or they're still recruiting by the time we arrive. 
and Wolfric to me is more of a threat. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to have him come up to here. So what we can do is, if he, Wolfric lands, it'd probably be somewhere up here. And then we can actually send Jason here to try and assault the units. To do a bit of damage against them. Now the other thing that happened was, we've now completed the heraldry of Leoness. So we could actually have tried to confederate with him, but unfortunately we can't do that. So what we're going to do now is start the work on Baston, which means in, was it, six turns. We should be able to start the option to confederate with these guys and expand our territory even more, which would be quite nice. Finally now, let's just do a quick look on our diplomacy to see what's going on in the wider world. And can we actually form up with anyone else? Okay, Baston, Military Alliance, Military Alliance, Defensive Alliance. Can we upgrade you? Let's have a look. No? Oh well, it's worth a try. Bordelow, are you willing to get a Military Alliance? No, but you are willing to get a Defensive Alliance. And you're actually willing to pay me some money for it, I think. Maybe not a lot, but I accept. this is a little bit more money than I had before, eh? By the comet. Empire, apparently, have grown quite a bit. They're the fourth most powerful faction in the whole game. And you're not willing to actually do anything with me, but at least we've got trade. And our relationship is continuing to improve. The Empire. Nordland, the are you willing to do anyway? Let's have a look. I'll ignore that. Nope. Middlelands, what about you guys? So what can the Empire do that the mighty Nope. Boris Todbringer, we're trying to be friends here. You're not allowing me to do that too easily, are you? Alright, Ness is deteriorating. Queen of Avalon. Lothian is the third I wonder who's the first and second then. Hmm. Oh you guys are pretty weak. That's good to see. Anyway, let's end the turn. And it does give me an opportunity now to actually talk to you guys about the latest Free Kingdoms video on the Total War channel. It's actually a little bit of a let's play that they typically do about this time before the release. And I have to say I'm quite intrigued about the campaign mechanics. The uh, video is all about Lu Bei, one of the legendary lords, so to speak, that you'd be able to play as. And I thought it was really quite interesting to see how the campaign would develop, especially with things like how story elements have been brought in and the importance of your heroes in terms of like how well they only do they bring to the battlefield and in terms of their traits and fighting abilities. But also just certain things like, you know, where they complement the units, how the whole hero system sort of interacts with one of them, with one another. There's a particular bit, for example, where one of the in the game that a one of the other sort of faction leaders died without an heir of sorts and decided that he was going to give the territory to you know, the player character that was playing as Lu Bei. And so as a result then he ends up picking up a larger fiefdom, some new factions and oh. Nordland, why have you done this? You've decided to go against Marienburg, my vassal and my friend and do I want to try and involve myself in this, or not? The thing is, Marienburg has been pretty loyal to me. And to be honest, we've, you know, we've managed to secure them, and they've been pretty faithful. I don't think it would be that honourable for us to, to break our alliance with them. So I'm going to enter this war. Unfortunately, Nordland have, you know, pushed me to the limit in a way. They should have not got involved with my vassal. But now we've got yet another enemy to deal with because we've got Musulan over here that could be coming towards Langil or Castle Atois at any moment. We've got the Barrow Legion down to the south. We've got Wolfric now who's actually landed in my territory. And now we're going to have to watch out for Nordland. And so, I sound like I'm moaning but it's just one of those things you know in this game. Yeah, let's have a look. Well, to be fair, at least they've got a full stack here to protect themselves. That's something. But first of all, we want to make sure that we can stop Wolfric here. So, let's see. Let's send you first of all. Can we have you attack the units? 58% chance. This will help out a bit. Assuming he's successful. He is. Fantastic. 
So he's already done quite a few damage, and in, particularly to units like the Spearmen here, and the Marauders there. He's even managed to do some damage to the Skinwolves. Oh, that's good. That's very good. You seek the lady's favor. Right. Let's have... By the light of the lady. Okay, we can't quite catch up to him, can we? What we're going to do, I'm going to send her, if it's possible, to try and block the army. It's not that good a chance. It's only 39%. But even if we can just block it for one turn. What would you have of and she did it. Fantastic. Right. I am the blood we're going to start for sending him up now to try and deal with this. Um, I tell you, actually. Stop a moment. We can't actually get up there this turn. And even though we've reduced their movement speed by 58%, he could also just drop into the ocean and run off. And I don't particularly want that. Now, we do have a reasonable amount of chivalry. So what I'm thinking is we could risk just taking a turn and laying an ambush. If we can find a decent chance, 70%. We do lose Chivalry, for those of you that haven't played as Petonia before, by doing this. And Chivalry is our way of, you know, doing this campaign. But it's only minus two, and we only need to do it for one turn. So if I pop it... Uh, hang on. He's 25%. I want to try and put it in... in we'll put him over this way. There we go. The reason being is that if he tries to get past and to go towards Langil, we can ambush him. If he heads towards Quran, then Quran can hold itself for, for a little while. So we'll let that happen. Now, what did I want to do? Florence is upgraded, but what I would like to do is try and change a hero. So if we pop onto Damsels. Uh, life. Here we go. It's going to cost a fair bit of our income, but I would like to get a Life Mage. These ones have it so you can actually heal your troops quite nicely. And this could be quite useful. Fleetfoot gives me Strider, which allows me to ignore com speed and combat penalties. Wingo for Determined, which makes it immune to psychology. I'm going to go for Fleetfooted. Having the extra speed to get around the map is going to be quite useful. So I'll let you come here, and then we're going to have him jo her join up eventually to join the force. Florence now is going to become a campaign wizard and start helping me around the map a bit. So first of all, we're going to go for some points now. Cancel there. Let's go for specialist so she can max up there a bit. Okay, who else is going to go up? Jason. Let's have you go for a point in that. And let's go for a point in Assault Garrison as well. No, let's go for Assassination. Not that we would call it something as, you know, unchivalrous as Assassinations. It's more of a heroic duo where a person is specially trained to deal with these situations. <laughs> right. Uh, what's going on here? We've got quite a few... Oh, we could actually upgrade here, it seems. We just need to get a bit more money. Right. Switch back over to here a minute. Just double check. Who calls? Midland. How are you guys? Beastmen, Nordland. Ah, right, your defensive allies. So it wouldn't surprise me if we actually get these guys trying to declare war on me at some point. All right, Nordland, how are you guys the doing Empire. anyway? Okay. We'll keep an eye on them. But in fact, let me just double check it once more. 70... 86. Okay, so in theory, Marienburg is actually more powerful than... They are, and especially since they've got us. So definitely something to help out a bit. It's a shame that I'm not doing one of the other factions because, as well, when I think about it. Because at the moment, well, the day after I recorded the last episode of this, the uh, face tag beta had an update. So, in theory, the update had an update, if that makes sense. But I saw in the patch notes, or update notes, that they did make sure of changing a few things around in the game. Just gave things like, I know that some of the old world characters have now got skills, or there was bugs that they fixed in that. But I can tell you from Betonia side of things, there isn't really anything that changed. The, I believe, 
was this, a couple of things with the units really have changed. Like, I think one of the knights got an extra six charge bonus. Um, I think the green knight has managed to get a bit of an increase to hit, knocking down enemy troops and so forth. But there's nothing major to worry about. And when you consider as well, we are using the closer to tabletop overhaul. It means that they may not be even relevant because the overhaul changes, of course, the stats of our troops. But, uh, yeah, just in case if anyone wondered, like, well, why did I not have that? Or well, I mentioned about it in the last video. It happened the day after he recorded it, I'm afraid. Hmm, I wonder how the elves are doing. Like, I don't plan to go to war against the elves if I can avoid it. Just because, well, at the end of the day, they're, as far as I'm concerned, they can the stay best? in Lauren as long as they want, you know? But, you guys now have decided to get a bit closer than you needed to. So, Florence, come over here and see if you can block that army, first of all, for me. You failed. Damn. Okay, Jason, come in and do some damage against them. And you failed. <sighs> right. Leonka, let's do this. Come out from ambush, charge forward, and let's get him. Wow, that uh, balance bar really puts things in my favour. But then again, it did with the Heinrich, and that didn't go as well as I was actually hoping to. Although in hindsight, I was talking to some, uh, someone about it in real life about it, and they did mention about I needed to improve my battle a bit more. I got a bit distracted and didn't really focus on moving my troops uh, properly. So as a result, I actually kind of lost more men than I should have done, as I think I had one of my flanks just basically sitting there and not really doing much about it, but I could have just swap, brought them around to attack from the flank. So, need to pay more of attention on what my troops are and what they're doing in this map, this future battle. Ugh. Too much talking. Anyway, looking at Battle Quran, it looks like we got a nice hill here that we can deploy our artillery against the enemy. And because we've got artillery, the, they're going to come towards us. They've got lots of these mortars. These guys are going to be better in combat than my own peasants. But what I'm going to have to try and do, basically, is pin them in place and use my overwhelming knight's advantage with my knight Evans, knights of the realm, pegasus knights and that, to basically kill them and try and kill as many of them as quickly as we can. Now, we don't have to worry about them trying to engage a ranged, which kind of is a bad thing because I would have liked to try to get them arranged a little bit, but... We'll manage. The Ankur is going to try and deal at uh, Wolfwick. I think we have the advantage, I would say. But especially with our items we've picked up, like the Sword of Anti-Heroes and stuff. But all we can do is wait and see how it goes on the battlefield. So I'll see you guys on the map in... Oh, actually, it's about to load up. So I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, let me see. Yeah... As long as we can pin them in place and hold them and quickly get our knights and that in to smash them into the weir, we should be able to do a lot of damage with our charge. Now we haven't obviously upgraded our new damsel of life magic, but hopefully this battle will give us some experience. And I believe she does start off with a spell straight away, so we can at least try and do some damage against them. I think it's the Awakening of the Wood spell. I'll have to double check. It's been a little while actually since I used Life Mage. I've been trying to play with factions like uh, Dark Elves and that, and as you can imagine, life magic is not really their forte, to say the least. Alright, uh, let's have a look in fact. Can we find out? Yeah, it is Awakening of the Woods. Minor magical damage in a large area, and it slows down their speed quite a bit. Nice. Okay, we might as well go for the gamble. May fate luck be with me. Gambling never pays. Damn. Okay, well, this is a very impressive hill. I think we're going to use this as much to my advantage as we can. So, let's put you guys right on the top up here. So you can shoot down at the enemy as they try to slog their way up this steep, steep hill. Let's do that. In fact, let's march you guys slightly over to this way so you can face the enemy straight away. 
Okay, archers. I'm just going to keep the archers in the behind them this time. There's not much use of keeping them in just to try and take some early shots, so we're just going to leave them here. Put you guys on guard mode. In fact, let's put you all on guard mode, I think. Alright, we're going to put spearmen on the flanks. Alright, same thing as before, we're basically going to put you guys straight along here. With a unit on each flank and then just to hold them in place, like so. Alright, our damsel's gonna hide, stay back here and she's gonna cast magic when needed. Leon Kerr's gonna be on the front line. And let's see what we can do. Is there any woods we can use? There's one, some there and some over here. I'm gonna try and put as many of my knights in this little patch of woods as I can. I don't know how many we can do, but if we can at least put them all in. If they're willing to, that is. Come on. One. Two. Come on. Give me a hiding spot. There we go. And same for you guys. Okay. Don't know how long it's going to last because the fact we do have these troops right over here. But if we can at least do that and have it so we can attack them a bit, that's going to help out. As for this side, what do we have here? Spearmen, mortars, mortars. I'm just having a look to see if there's anything we can actually try and target with our Pegasus Knights. Something maybe low level. Thinking going after these skin walls would probably may be a good idea. Let's find out. Alright, if I ask you to come after these, my Pegasus. Uh, it just says it's a reasonable chance. Right, let's speed things up. Alright, we want these guys to start firing as soon as possible. These are going to spread out just a little bit more, so we don't have to worry about them trying to get past my these guys. Let's move you guys slightly forward. And let's move you guys slightly forward. Not too much, just slightly. Okay, let's have a look here. Uh, can we have you guys try and chase down some of these units, like maybe one of the chariots or something? I don't know how effective these guys actually are when it comes to fighting, but if we can try and go after some of them. But they just want to stay together, don't they? Alright. Oh, that was a nice shot just then. Okay, let's have... You guys focus fire on the units on coming up here. Come on, should be nice and easy. Okay, you guys, see about taking out these skin wolves for me now, please. Oh, what the hell? Get back here, get back. Where, where did you guys go? Come from. Who are you guys then? You're that, oh, damn it. I, had n I lost this unit. <laughs> Damn. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. I didn't expect that. <laughs> In all honesty. Oh. This is quite a bit of a chase now up the hill. <laughs> okay, Damso. Is there anything we can do here to try and help out a little bit? Alright. There we go. That slowed him down a bit. The Berserkers are now gone to work. Okay, you guys need to pull out before the enemy swarm us. Okay. Come on, pe uh, come on. I told you to get up here. Alright, here comes Wolfwick. Alright, how are you as a challenge to the Ankur? You're actually a pretty low one. Let's have you come down here and do charge in. Alright. There we go. Come on and smack. There we go. Now, let's start activating this to improve our ability. Right. Okay, turn around. Let's have a bit of a thing here between our heroes. Okay, alright, you've guys spotted my troops. Right. Let's start having these guys come out now to charge. Alright, we've managed to actually do pretty well here. We've managed to defend our troops a bit. Okay, let's have you guys come over here. You guys 
Okay, slow down a minute. Right, why are you guys pulling back? We don't want that. Right, get in a position here. You guys are going to come over here, ready to charge into that flank. Leon Kerr is basically swamping everyone at this point. You guys come in here and uh, deal some damage to them. You guys can do the same. Right, all my knights, as great as you're doing, let's get you back up to over here, I think. We'll just get you out of there for now. Alright, what's going on over here? You guys are out of control, but you're also quite tired. Okay, how are we doing over here, Lianka? Alright, let's see if we can drop a spell right in the middle here. There we go, that did a bit of spot of damage. Okay, you guys now charge into the side of these mortars. How we got here? Wolfwick's managed to get out of that combat. Let's get you guys over here to help out. Okay, you guys need to pull back. Alright, let's get you guys into a nice charge right on top of here to head down towards that unit. Okay, you guys, let's have you guys charge down towards the mortars here to help out on that side. Alright, we need you guys now to start charging down here against these troops. Engage them. You guys need to get into that mode. Right. Okay, Leon Kerr, I want you to finish off Wolfwick for me. Right. Let's get you guys charging in now to do this damage I want. Focus first of all on this unit of Maud Spearmen. There we go, I was just watching them get killed off bit by bit. Alright, let's pull you guys back out. At this point, it's just a case of hammering our troops away. Leonka, let's activate your ability once more. We're going to have you finish off Wolfwick the Wanderer and show that he's not that big a challenge. Okay, Pexus Knights, we're going to have you guys come over here, get ready to charge in. Alright, let's have you guys charge in here, you guys charge in here. You guys are going to charge in down here, and you guys are going to come down here. Right, they've broken. Everyone has broken. Victory is mine. That went extremely well. Let's take you guys off your mode now so we can chase down enemy units. We've managed to kill off Wolfwick as well. Fantastic. Let's chase down every one of these enemy troops trying to get away from us. Pegasus Knights, where about you guys? You can go after that unit here. Alright, Leon Kurt, let's have you guys go after this one. Alright. My damsel, can we have you try and do something against... Let's try if we can just do a, a bit of damage against this one here. There we go. Might as well get her to get a bit of extra experience. Okay, I think that's everyone in my, against me done. Okay, let's end the battle. A decisive victory. Nicely done by my men. So, we lost 263 men. That wasn't too shabby, I must say. I think we would have lost a little bit less if I actually managed to engage Wolfwick. Unfortunately, he managed to escape from Leon Kerr while he was basically single-handedly holding off most of the enemy force at one point. Well, at least a few units. Well, uh, he went off and he was able to attack some of my peasants, unfortunately. So I believe it's this, probably this army unit here. They've taken the most casualties, which represent the 44. And they only managed to kill one person. But all my other units did quite well. I mean, my Pegasus Knights killed 100 roughly between them. Trebuchets did extremely well. Hunt nearly 100 casualties on average between them as well. Even my pe Spirit Arms did quite well. I'm most of a bit reluctant to swap them out for the ones with shields. But I may do that just because it's going to give me extra protection, but there's no rush to do it. Shields really only prove more, quite useful when it comes to facing enemy fire for missile support uh, attacks. And given the fact that we are facing undead at the moment, we're not really too fussed about that. Maybe if we had to fight the Wood Elves, but let's face it. The Wood Elves have so much missile fire ability 
that they just wouldn't be able to do with things. Shields aren't going to do that much against them, let's be honest. But look at this, we managed to wipe out most of that enemy force. We have the choice now to ransom them for a nice bit of money and lose a bit of chivalry or we can execute them. I'm actually going to see if I ransom them. It's minus five, but it does give me a lot of money, which could come in useful right now. So we're going to give that. And can we finish off that unit? We can. Come over here, good sirs. This time we're just going to go for a nice order resolve and we've killed them off. There we go. And... Yeah, we're going to go for that again. Managed to pick up the shield of Tlaunus. Okay. 30% missile assistance. Okay, we'll check that out. Valet, responsible for the grooming, wardrobe, and presentation of their charges. A valet is indispensable for the style conscious noble. Not too fussed about that, to be honest, but the 8% magic item drop will be more useful. Blood Feuder. So you've roundly ma marmalized the internal challenger? He'll be back for a rematch, and soon, of that you can be certain. So because we defeated Wolfwick, we'll get a 10% charge bonus. Well, that's not too shabby. You seek counsel? No, we don't, Leonk. Not as yet. Okay. Uh, where's my Marienburg? Ah, you're here. Right. Okay, Fyodorek Gossa is now currently raiding in Marienburg territory. I'm just going to leave Marienburg to deal with it. I know I joined in the war on their side, but I've got my own problems here. We've got Musilon to deal with, we've got the Barrow Legion up here on Blackstone Post to sort out. We've got our own problems to deal with. We don't need to worry about them. Right, let's have you march back to Langill for the moment. But, if we pop on here, what can we give you? Uh, I'm going to give you a rank of Glyphenial's progeny. Glyphenial is basically a um, one of the bloodline of the horses that Petonia have got. Petonia horses are well known for being strong, able to hold a knight, you know, in full armor, charging a full gallop with a lance ready to go. There, it's basically the secret behind their victory and their army strategy, basically. So we're going to go for a unit of that. I'm going to give him... Thorns of Honor. That would be nice. Ladies, man... Oh no, we've already looked at these. I'm going to continue working on this. Uh, we've already got that up a bit. Let's make you even more of a tough... Passed to hit. There we go. And Angeline de Aquitaine. Lovely to meet you, my dear. Let's grab you that. And we're going to go for Earthblood. Our next one, of course, will be your Life Bloom. So every time that we cast a spell, we actually heal up everyone across the map slightly. That'll be quite nice. Okay, Artois. We've now got enough money. We can upgrade that. Uh, what can we do here? I would like to get walls for Marienburg at some point, but we're in no rush for that right now. I'd save it for a little bit. Let's get that. And... Do we want this? We are building that, so it means that we can get our men at arms and spear arms of shield. And we can continue to get pole arms and so forth. Yeah, let's go for that. It's used up all my money, but that's fine. Now that we've done that, Florence, I'm going to have you come down towards Blackstone Post. And Jason, we're going to... Oh, Jason, thank you. We're going to have you come down here as well. They can start doing agent actions against Blackstone Post and whatever army's being built up there. So we can at least we can, um, get rid of the attrition, perhaps, from vampiric corruption and so forth. While we're heading down there with the main force. Which is going to take a bit of time to replenish. But since we didn't lose that many men, it will probably be done by the time we arrive. So in fact, I'm just going to have you guys march straight down. I think will probably be the best thing to do. Right, I think that's everything I needed to worry about this turn. Rank 4, rank 3. It'd be a shame to get rid of these archers as well. Ugh. I'll tell you what, while we've actually done this, since we've defeated Norska now, and shown that okay, basically give him a bloody nose, I wonder if they'd be willing to pursue peace. They are. 
Now they're not willing to get me become a vassal, but they are going to be willing to pay if I'm lucky. Uh, you're not willing to give me 900. What about 600? What about 300? Fine. Let's just secure peace for them for the moment. Agreed. You forget yourself. I will take this pact, but know that your tribute is to solve every bee in your command. The most important is that we managed to reduce one enemy off us at least. Yes. A timely Would you arrival. be willing to get peace as My well? Have yeah. Not eaten in days. Okay, and you're willing to you might be willing to pay a fair bit of money. Maybe not. I'll tell you what, you're gonna give me some money for this. Because I could just come in and wipe you off the face of the earth, but I'm nice. And I really yes. want the money. There we go. That's that sorted. Okay. Everyone else is happy. Yes. Carrick Zivlin. Hmm. Because the thing is, I don't particularly want to really go into the mountains, which is where these guys are. But their province happens to belong to Barrowstone, uh, Blackstone Post, as well as Grunzin up here. So it would be tempting maybe to give it to them, because we can do that with one of the mods here. If anyone hasn't seen this before, it's for region trading. What it does, you've got two ways you go about it, and it's only you, the player, that can do this. All right, so the AIs can't do it between themselves, that sort of thing. If I wanted to purchase a property, I can only do it with factions that are on quite friendly terms with me. So we can see like Carcassonne, for example, Bordelot, and so forth. So say I wanted to take a particular territory that belonged to Bastan. So we click on here. Now we can't take a, you have to take something that's in the province. So we can't take Castle Bastan because we don't own anything in that province. But we do own Gisero. So we could click this and if we had 8,000 we could buy it straight off them with all the buildings inside straight off the bat. Or if we captured somewhere like say I, I want to remain friendly with the Empire. So if I took um, Nordland's capital for example. What I could do is I could just go to, like, the Empire and say, well, look, um, whatever, where are you, actually? The Empire. I want to give you, or say I wanted to give the Marienburg back. I could just say, here's Marienburg, and tell them to gift the region, and then that will be done. And, yeah, we're not going to gift that, though. <laughs> right, let's switch over to this, just to avoid anything like that happening. There. But, we can do that. As well as the fact we've got an option to become a vassal if I should wish to. Now, I'm not going to be doing that in this campaign, but I think that could make for an interesting start, especially for some of the other factions. Like, I don't know if I mentioned about it, but my first idea for this campaign, rather than doing Batonia, was actually to play as Karakadrin, the, you know, the, ho the dwarf hold of the Slayers. And so I would have had Ungrim Iron Fist as my faction leader, and so on. But, at the end of the day, uh, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, the faction leader for the Dwarves, is also the High King of the Dwarves. So it made a lot of sense to me as to have an option that I could contact him and say, look, I'm willing to become your vassal because you are my king. And therefore, I'm willing to vassal, you know, to uh, swear my fealty to you. That makes a lot of sense to me. Likewise, if I was to play as Bordelow for the Petonians, or if I was, I don't know, uh, technically I can see the argument for doing it with Ty Tyrion, for example, for the High Elves, because um, Ariel, the faction leader of Avalon, is the queen, the Ever Queen. She is the queen of the High Elves. And, well, if you go by the stories, you know, as also Tyrion's lover. So it would make sense then that he would also swear fealty to her. You know, it's just a nice little mechanic which I think made a lot of sense in uh, for some of the campaigns. And I would have liked to do that. Maybe as a narrative let's play at some point. Just to have it that you can actually vassalize and offer yourself up as a vassal to someone. That could become quite handy. But anyway, that is the end of today's episode. So, after dealing with the fact that... Um, We've got Skaven stealing people from Corian, you bastards. We're gonna hunt them down. Scourge of Cain is defeated, and it looks like we've got a sort of quest for Sword of Quran. 
So a mist rolls down from the mountains covering the lands of Betonia. The origin of this dense effluvium is as murky as the mist itself. All the people of Betonia know that what that is that what is not there before is there now, obfuscating and obscuring all. Yet more troubling than the mist itself is what lies beyond. The shouting and smashing of the greenskin hordes haunt the dreams of the peasants, who fear they may be next. The people panic, refusing to leave their homes, lest they be the next victims of the slavery and rampaging orc hosts. So for five turns we've now got a minus two to control because of the strange mist going through our lands. And we've now got a mission. Sword of Creon have three knights of the realm in our uh, army. So, the fog has affected all. It has become so thick that the light of the sun cannot pierce it. So it, so it is across the Bretonian marches. A land of quarrelsome yet bright climate now despairs under the eternal fog, forsaken by the sun. As the light fades from the land, so too does the Sword of Creon's aura ebb and dim. King Leon Kerr grows concerned, and so, sealing the ancestral blade away, endeavours to discover the source and solution to the impenetrable mist. All across Petonia, dukedoms report that the mist has given rise to mania, as Greenskin Horde rampages there, taking advantage of the murk to smash, pillage, and spread destruction across the land. Although it may not be a permanent solution, the king has an immediate duty to protect his people. So, we're going to be eventually upgrading and get some Knights of the Realm, once we've done that. But like I was going to say, that's all happening in the next episode. So for now, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you join me next time for more Petonia action. But until then, take care, and goodbye for now.